Bethany. Today I wanted to give you a quick tutorial for these really cute boho sandals. And quick, I mean quick. They take about 10 minutes. They are made using cheap foam flip-flops, which I bet you have a pair in your closet right now. Be sure to check the description. I have links to the materials that I'm using, as well as a link to the written pattern on my blog. This is a fun and quick project. I know that you'll love your new boho sandals. Ready? Let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started on making these flip-flops. Um, what you need is a pair of foam flip-flops. I got mine from Old Navy for two bucks. Um, a G-hook and some cotton yarn. Um, the hook and the yarn doesn't necessarily have to be what I'm using. I'm using Red Heart um, Scrubby Smoothie. Um, you can use, I would suggest cotton, but you can probably use whatever yarn you have on hand. Um, and then your hook would be according to the size of yarn you're using. So if you're using like a thinner yarn, like a DK or um, Baby Weight or something like that, you can definitely use that, but you want to use a smaller hook because... Um, as you're working your stitches, you're trying to fill in the gaps so that it looks like it's all crochet right there. And if you're using thinner yarn, you're going to need to make more stitches. However, if you're using a larger hook, the stitches on top will kind of ruffle as you're trying to squeeze as many stitches as you can into there. So it's a bit of a trial and error as you're trying to find the right hook for the right yarn. But for me, G-hook worked really well for this medium weight cotton. So gather your supplies and we'll get going. Okay, so we're going to get started crocheting. You're going to... You're going to start by crocheting around this part on the flip-flop. Um, because I'm right-handed, I'm starting on this side, this left side. And it is a little bit awkward, so it's going to take possibly take a little bit of practice to kind of figure it out. You've got to kind of hold the flip-flop weird and you're trying to make it work. But um, So you're going to stick your hook under it. This puts a loop on your hook and then pull it through. That's the first stitch and it's a little wonky still. So kind of hold everything in place, put your hook back under, grab one more, and then that second stitch kind of holds what you're doing in place. And it will move a little bit after you get going, but um, I do like the ridges on the old navy flip-flops because it kind of hold the texture kind of holds the yarn in place. So again, you're gonna need possibly need a little bit of practice doing this. You want to um, keep it loose enough that the loop isn't being like tugged down because you want it on top but you need it tight enough that it won't be loose and sliding around so it's a little bit of a little bit of a trial and error as you're trying to get the right gauge and again see the flip-flop kind of gets in the way as you're trying to work so you're just going to be reaching under grabbing the yarn and then working your single crochet around it Okay, so once you get here, I like to work a few extra there just because um, it's a little bit easier to work it back a little bit and then adjust it forward than it is to just actually work it right there. So adjust your stitches and you can see I got it pretty, got it pretty neat there. And then sometimes they'll like cross over and I don't know what I'm doing. I'm like watching what I'm doing and I don't know why sometimes the stitch crosses. So you can just go in and just using your finger or a needle or something, just manually uncross them so that it looks a little nicer. Okay, so when you get here, there's really no way to cro crochet around that, so don't worry about it. Just turn your flip-flop like this and start crocheting up the other side. And again, you want to make sure that it's loose enough, that your stitch sits nicely, but tight enough that it's not sliding everywhere. So I'm going to undo that one because I pulled it a little bit too tight and the stitch was kind of laying on top instead of to the side how I wanted it. 
So slow and steady wins the race on these guys. If you go nice and slow, your work will look a lot nicer. And it really is a fast project, even though you're working kind of slowly around here. Once you get this done, you're halfway done. And, you know, it's only been a few minutes since we started. When you get down here it starts to get a little crazy because you're trying to hold the yarn and you're trying to hold the flip-flop so you have to get kind of creative the way that you're going to hold the flip-flop i kind of have had luck holding it like this like with you know my my hand like that and it seems to be i get a little better access to the bottom part of it So there you go. So that is crocheting around the strap. So leave, let's see, make sure that you push them to where you, you know, that they're the way you want and that you have enough stitches in there. I actually think I have too many, so I'm going to pull mine out. I don't like how it's kind of roughly right there. So I'm going to pull a couple stitches out and then spread them down a little bit and see if I like the look of that better. And it looks much better. Okay, so set this aside for a minute. You need to cut your ends. And then set the flip-flop aside. Again, you will also you need to repeat that for the other shoe, your other flip-flop. And now we're gonna make the square piece. So we're gonna start with a th so with three chains. Then you're going to double crochet 12 times into the first chain. And then you're going to join with the first double crochet. And starting on round two, you're going to chain one, single crochet one in the next stitch. And then in the next stitch, you're going to form a corner. So you're going to sing, single crochet, chain two, single crochet into the same stitch, single crochet into the next two stitches. And then you're going to work another corner in the next stitch. You're going to single crochet, chain two, single crochet into the same stitch, single crochet into the next two stitches, and work the third corner in the next stitch, single crochet, chain two, single crochet into the same stitch, single crochet into the next two stitches, and then the last corner is worked in the next stitch. and then a single crochet into that last stitch. And join with that first single crochet stitch. So that's the little square piece. So make two of those and we will sew them onto the slipper, onto the flip-flop. Okay, so we have our square and um, you should have, make sure you weave in your tails before you attempt to sew it on. So I definitely recommend pinning. So you want to pin it in place and this helps it just kind of stay where you need it to stay. So 
gonna look kind of ugly when it's pinned, of course. Oh, and make sure that it's lined up right there at the bottom. Okay, so it's pinned in place. So you're gonna thread a length of yarn onto your darning needle. And you can start on either side. But you wanna go, you wanna sew through the stitch on the flip-flop and the stitch on the square. And so I just go under the two loops and under the two loops on the square. And I'm just doing a simple running stitch. So I've got that part kind of in the right place. I'm going to remove my pin. So I'm going to go back in through the t under the two loops on the square, under the two loops on the flip-flop. And just keep doing that as you go around. The, the, your stitches may not exactly line up, with each stitch, each, like have a corresponding stitch on the square, but um, just do your best to sew them, sew it nice and neat. Okay, so once you sew around it once, I recommend going back over it. You don't really have to if you don't want to, but I go over it twice just because when you're wearing them, like it's gonna kind of stretch a little bit. Um, and I just, I prefer to make sure that it's really tight. So, so back over one more time and then we will get these flip flops finished. Okay, so now that this is attached securely, let's make sure we take care of this little end, these little ends right here. So my preferred method is I wrap it around like that under so that the end is hidden. And then under this part, I put a little dab of hot glue. This just keeps it in place and this keeps like the, the yarn from like sliding up. Cause really it's just kind of wrapped around it. It's not like super secured onto it. So I just take it and I kind of twist it in there so that it grabs all of the glue. Let that cool off and then repeat onto the other side. So you're gonna take it again, you're gonna take it, you're gonna wrap it like this and then glue it on the underside of the strap. Okay, and then once it has cooled off, you can take your sharp scissors and clip the end. Okay, so one more thing. Now we just need to crochet the little chain that goes around your ankle. So again, this will completely depend on your hook, your size foot, your uh, yarn that you're using. But um, for me, I did 65 in this medium weight yarn with a G hook. So just use your foot for it. And, and, then, and then you may even want your chain to hang down your ankle longer. You may want it super short. So you're just gonna have to kind of use your, your own preferences as a gauge for, for how long you wanna make the, your, your chain. Okay, so there's my chain. You want to clip your ends. Put net and knots on both ends. And then that little corner, that chain two corner, 
and just pull the chain through there. And then I like to clip the ends down pretty short. And that part goes around your ankle. So you're finished. So repeat that for the other shoe. And then of course repeat it for every other foam foot flops you have in your closet because you're going to want to make more of these. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye.